kids. Thank you so much for getting one of our art bags. There's all different colors of these bags that we carry, but they all have the same thing inside. My name is Professor Queen Bee Artist, and I want to set one of these bags up with you today to show you how to get started painting. Okay, so as promised, here is a kit. We have them in bags in all different colors, and then there's this little really cool apron inside, and they come in all different colors as well. So here's one of the kits, and I said I was going to show you everything that's in your kit. So you get a tray to load your paint on and mix if necessary. And then I'll go through everything one by one, just so you can see. All right, you get this really cool reusable bag and they come in all different colors. And it's also branded with the Professor Queen Bee. Ooh, look at that. So you get a really cool little bag and then you also get an apron and these come in all different colors as well and this one says you're an artist okay this one fits uh, up to at least age 10 or 12 and this is basically a kids a kids art bag this one's also branded with professor queen bee there okay these come in all different colors and you are titled you have a a professional name on here you're called an artist so now within your bag you have a few things you have a set of paint and these are six different little small pots of paint um, you don't need a whole lot of paint when you're doing any activity on this size canvas your canvas is an 8 by 10 and you can literally stretch this paint with a little bit of water to cover three or four eight by tens okay so keep that in mind when you are using your paint straight out of your little pots here you're going to get um, a lot of use out of those also you have a paintbrush and where is it did i leave it in here yes i did and you have this really cool flat paintbrush this paintbrush is like a dual purpose paintbrush it's flat but if you turn it on the side, you get straight lines when you're painting. So you can get really thin straight lines or you can get really thick flat lines. So it just depends on what you're, you're doing when you begin to paint. You can cover a lot of area when you put the brush in a flat orientation. When you put it in a sideways orientation, you can make lines and stripes with that. Okay, thin stripes. So you have a brush in your kit. You're going to get a painter's palette. This is what you put your paint on. You can put your paint in separate sections here. and Put a little couple uh, drops of water in each one of them. And you can use your paintbrush to mix it to thin it out a little bit. So this is your painter's palette, which you'll use to put your paints in. Whatever you need, you can mix two colors together in a larger area. You can put another color here that you're never gonna mix in that space, but you can go in here and dip some paint out and put it somewhere else that you might want to mix it with okay and that brings me to talking about your color chart you have a color chart right here and you want to always check this out when you want to make a new color since you're getting primary paints you're going to get blue red and yellow blue red and yellow in your kit and then you're also going to get black and white and some brown these are all general purposes, okay? But these three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, can create a whole different um, set of colors. Primary colors make secondary colors. So if you mix a red and a yellow together, you're gonna get an orange. So you don't need to have an orange in your kit, okay? But if you have orange, if you go out and buy another kit of paint, and you have orange to make it easier, that's all good too. But I just would like you to know that you can make all these new colors and more with just the primary colors red yellow and blue they make all these other different colors on the color palette plus some the entire rainbow it just depends on your mixture how much of one to the other and as you can see on this color chart this yellow part is a little larger than that red part so that means you're going to mix less red with the yellow to get the orange if you mix a lot of red with the yellow, this is going to be really, really dark and almost red. So maybe a red orange. If you want a red orange, yeah, you would add more red to the yellow to get this a little bit darker. Okay. And see here, you have a larger yellow 
and a small blue so that's going to give you your green keep in mind that the darker colors in your kit in your primary set the darker colors are very very powerful that's why on this chart uh, all of the darker heavier colors even black are small okay when you get down here where you're going to make a skin tone color even though you have brown in your kit and you can mix a little white and yellow in it to get that really skin color tan what you do is a little bit of red a whole lot of white and a little bit of yellow and you're going to get that skin color so it's really really important to have this color chart refer to it when you want to make new colors black you got a black in there and black is you know gray scale just filling in dark tones or filling in gray tones and when you use black with white you get your gray tones okay so that is your color chart your your palette your painter's palette and your paint and your brush okay oh you also get your inspiration here your your b antennas we always wear B antennas with our paint parties. So we put B antennas in your kit to inspire you to pollinate your canvases. Because that's what bees do, remember? Bees pollinate the canvas to make the world beautiful. So we're wearing our antennas when we paint to make our canvases beautiful. Included in that kit are, and I'll show you exactly what to do with those those traceables you have two eight by ten canvases so you have enough paint to do a really nice job with these two canvases if you need a larger canvas you might have to purchase a little bit more paint or just use all of the paint on the one larger canvas so you have these two small gallery wrapped canvases these are gallery wrapped and the reason that we call them gallery wrapped is because on the back there's a frame inside and the canvas is wrapped around it so it hides the raw edge of the the wood these are really really nice to be able to hang up on the wall without a without a frame so if you like gallery wrap if you want to hang it up on the wall without a frame you want to get a gallery wrap if you get a panel which is a whole nother animal and we'll talk about that later in some more of my tutorials you would need to to frame those The other thing in your kit, kids, you're going to get two traceables, and they're really random. We have some really fun traceables. We're going to have a gallery of these traceables that you can to check out on our website. But for now, we are just creating. We're creating uh, paint kits with random fun shapes for kids up to ten years old. This is probably pretty interesting for ten year olds. But if you're not 10 year, old, 10 year old, or if you're a very mature, advanced 10 year old, you might not want to paint one of these, but you'll still have it in your kit. Um, what you can do is you can join one of our paint tutorials or our paint parties on Zoom. We have virtual paint parties, and you can use your small canvas to paint something that we're doing online. But here are your two traceables. And the way that you get this image onto your canvas is simply knowing where your center is on your canvas okay you have this thing here called graphite paper on one side there's graphite and on the other side there's none graphite is simply pencil material okay graphite is pencil material that they have spread out on one side of the sheet and that will transfer your image onto your canvas okay so let's go ahead and do one so you can see how that works the matte side the side that looks a little bit more white than the other side which looks a little bit darker and shinier okay this side is the outs the upper side okay all right this side is the side that's going to be facing the bottom of your traceable like that and the shinier dark side is going to be the side that faces your canvas so you want to put that down on your canvas you want to put your artwork or your traceable over it. And sometimes you might have to move the traceable around a little bit. So you want to be careful when you move it around, pick it up to move the traceable around to another area. So my suggestion would be to hold it with one thumb or a finger, have somebody help you. Or you could just cut this out to match the size of your canvas. And why don't we just go ahead and do that? That might be a little bit easier for a lot of people. So what I'm going to do 
is cut it out. And how I do that is I place my canvas over my sheet of paper and I take a pencil and I go around the canvas with the pencil just to get the exact proportions cut out of from the um, the traceable. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. And this traceable will be the exact same size of my eight by 10 canvas. Now, if your canvas is really large and it doesn't really, really matter where you put this, or if you have a larger piece of graphite paper, which is totally purchasable or obtainable from Michaels or me, I carry that too, if you want a larger piece. But for the 8x10 canvas, you don't need a real, really big piece because it's just really easy to move this around underneath. So what I'm going to do also, <clears throat> just to further simplify the whole process and to make you feel a little bit more secure, I'm just going to go ahead and tape it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tape it to the top of my canvas like that. Just a little piece of tape going all the way around right here. See? And then you can lay it down. You can pick up the, the image. And if you have to move the graphite paper over a little bit, you pick it up and you land right back in the same spot. So we're going to go ahead and trace that down. All right? And the way we trace it down is we're going to use an object that's not a pencil or a pen. Something that has a point. And you have this really cool paintbrush in your kit. You can use this to do the tracing. So you go over. And you can kind of see your tra your graphite paper through your traceable. So you can move it around how you need to. Do we have the right side? Oh, we have the wrong side. We want the dark side down and the dull side, dull white looking side up. You could always test it out. If you don't know which side is which, check this out. You could always test it out on something, lay it down and, and scrape over it. You see that there's a mark? Lay it down and scrape over it. You're going to see which side is actually the graphite paper. So we're going to put that back under here. That. And now I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush. And I'm just going to start tracing. And you don't have to push very hard. Just trace over. The lines. And sometimes you have a whole lot of extra lines. You probably don't want to put them all if they're really non-essential lines. The essential lines are of this bird is the beak, the head, the eyes, the tail, the feet. And there might be lines I don't even need to put, like, I don't, oh, okay, now I know what that is. So, see, now I'm moving away from where my graphite paper is down here. I have to move my graphite paper over a little bit, because I actually traced over the tail, but didn't grab the tail. Ha ha. Boo on me. So I'm tracing over, and if you feel like this tool is not sturdy enough for you to trace with, you can always use a pencil. I just don't recommend it because sometimes you can be a little bit too aggressive and this canvas might get a dent in it or, or you might go all the way through it. So you want to be really, really careful. And again, you want to keep in mind that you're, you're needing to move that graphite paper so you can grab all of the information that you want to paint let's go ahead and get that wing in real quick and then i'm going to move it back to the left because i am missing the other wing over here. Put it back down. Ooh, kind of noisy, huh? You 
have the tongue in here. And if you're a good artist, you don't even really need all of the extra lines. You can figure out how things need to be painted. When we paint online, we don't normally paint what your traceable is. Just keep that in mind. We're going to have a different painting that you can apply to your canvas when you come online and paint with us. Other than that, you're going to freestyle it and look at this. Voila. You're going to jump out there with your own piece of traceable paper and your traceable image and put it on top of your nice, clean, bright canvas. And you're going to be able to reproduce this image onto that canvas or whatever image comes in your kit. So look at this. Doesn't that look great? Can you see it? It's really nice and outlined. And then after that, you can take this piece off and save it for another, another project. Or you can use it as like a coloring sheet. If you have some crayons or anything like that, you can go ahead and color it with crayons or colored pencils. So when you put the tape on, you really kind of want to put it in a place that's not going to cover your image in case you want to paint this later on. Okay. So hopefully that explains how you use this kit. Make sure you put these on. When you get started, it helps you to be more artistically creative and motivated. Put your antennas on, and that is from Professor Queen Bee. I totally hope that you are very successful in your drawing and that these tutorials help you to understand what's in your kit and how do you use them. Now that we know what's inside of our bag, Let's go ahead and get ready to paint. First of all, you want to get a cup. Put a little bit of water in it. Make sure you ask your parents which cup you can use so that you don't damage a cup that they want to keep. This is a plastic cup. Put a little bit of water in it, and that's going to be for you to rinse your brush off and then blot it on your tissue paper that's going to come in your kit. Um, we, are, we have already started. We started one painting the other day, but what we did, we transferred this image onto the painting with the graphite paper. Remember the graphite paper I taught you how to do? So what we have to do today for this blank canvas is do the same thing. We're going to put the graphite paper underneath and trace the tortoise onto the, the new canvas. All right, so once you have that tracing done, you're going to get into knowing what you might want to put, what colors. You know that tortoises, tortoises are green and you might have water. So you want to put a little bit of blue on your paint palette here and you want to put a little bit of uh, yellow on there because you definitely want to refer to this color chart to get your new colors because green would require yellow and blue. So definitely look at that color chart when you're about to mix colors in here on your, your painter palette. You also want to make sure you have white in all of your colors, a little bit of white that's going to help it pop. So first thing you want to do, set up your table space where you want to paint make sure you're nice and comfortable and everything's organized put your 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 graphite paper on your canvas put your image on top of that trace with a blunt object remove everything put that to the side and then once you have all your paints loaded in your painter's palette you can start filling in the blanks happy painting now that you know what's inside your bag and how to set everything up, I want you to have a whole lot of fun and be really successful in your painting. But you have to put these antennas on, okay? So you're gonna end up with something really beautiful like that. So let's get painting and have a good time. We'll see you at the next event.